Welcome to part 2 of making the ultimate touchscreen controller interface. In this video, we're going to cover Keyboard Maestro. This is a super complex piece of software and we have a lot to cover, so no time for intro. Okay, quick intro. We're back. If you haven't checked out part 1 of this video, I strongly encourage you to do so, because we are going to use some of the features that we covered in that video in this one. So I'll have links here or in the video description. If you haven't watched it already, go and watch it now and come back. So Keyboard Maestro. In short, Keyboard Maestro lets you program a string of commands and automations with a single key press, and we can trigger those commands via MIDI CC with our shiny brand new touchscreen we made in the first video. A couple quick notes before we go any further. One, Keyboard Maestro is a Mac-only software, so Windows users, I'm sorry, this video might not be too relevant for you. However, I was pointed to a software called Auto Hotkey for Windows that might do the same things, but I don't know how to use it. I'll have links in the video description. Two, all of the commands that we're going to do today are in Cubase. However, as you'll see in a minute, everything is really easy to implement into your own DAW. So Logic, Pro Tools, any other DAW users out there, please stick around. Okay, so today we're going to make a simple macro that I use all the time, which opens up a new instrument track, selects the right one, and then colors it. Yes, I know, it doesn't take a lot of time to do this anyways, but trust me, every mouse drag and every key press is wasted time you could have been creating, and you'll be using this one all the time. At the end of the video, I'm going to cover some more advanced macros I already created, just so you can get an idea of what is possible, what can be achieved, and how to create it inside of Keyboard Maestro. Okay, let's jump right in. First, add a new group just to have all of your Cubase macros in one place. It's easier to have it this way for the next time you want to edit, duplicate, or add another command. Hit the plus icon below the group list and rename your group. You can even change the group icon to match the application you're using. Next, choose Available in All Applications and change it to Available in These Applications and add the application you're using, Cubase in our case. Now let's add a new macro. Click the plus icon at the bottom of the macro list and let's name it. The macro we're creating right now will trigger a new instrument track and will select a predetermined instrument of our choosing. For this example, let's go with Omnisphere. So we're going to call this macro Instrument Omnisphere. Right, let's start building our macro. At the top section of the screen, we can see our trigger section. This tells Keyboard Maestro what trigger it should be looking for in order to trigger that macro. In our case, we will choose MIDI CC trigger since we have our touchscreen triggering MIDI CCs, but you can also choose a keyboard shortcut or you can designate a secondary keyboard that will only trigger macro commands. There's a lot to choose from. So we're going to choose MIDI trigger and notice how allow recording is checked. That basically means that it is in learn mode and it is listening to any incoming MIDI command. So let's click the correct button on our touch screen and you should see the values change to your button's values. If so, uncheck allow recording to get out of learn mode. Okay, now it's time to start actually building our macro. And the first thing and a good thing to remember here is that we're trying to mimic our own actions. And our DAW and the conditions in which we make our actions inside of it often change. And so we're trying to find parameters and conditions that are constant in our workflow and will work every time no matter what. You'll see what I mean in a second. So. Let's go over the steps. Our first goal in our first example is to create an instrument track by opening the new instrument track dialog. So we'll click new action and in the action list that just opened up, we're going to search for menu item and we'll drag select or show menu item in. Now to find the right menu item, click on menu, choose the application, Cubase in our case, project, add track, instrument. Now we're going to jump into Cubase to figure out what is the next command we need to trigger. So I'll manually open a new instrument track and see what happens. And as you can see, the next thing is to click on the instrument in order to change which instrument we want to load. So let's trigger a mouse click. Back in Keyboard Maestro, after each command that requires some basic computing power, I like to insert a small pause between the last and the next action, since sometimes Keyboard Maestro will trigger the next action before the computer finished responding to our last action. 
So, while our action list is still open, let's search for pause and drag that right after our first action and I'll try 0.2 seconds. There is no rule here for how many seconds or how many milliseconds you should use, it's really a trial and error. Let's create that mouse click command next. Search for mouse in the action list and drag move or click mouse to the next action. So, as you can see, this action will click the left button with no modifiers, but you can add a command click or option click, whatever you like, no need to in this case. The next line has to do with the location of the mouse, and as you can see in the next line, our location is relative to the front window's corner, which in our case is perfect since our front window now, back in Cubase, is the new track dialog. So, in Keyboard Maestro, click on Get, and you'll have 5 seconds to go back into Cubase and position your mouse where you want it to click. Let's do this. No need to actually click, just position your mouse. Back in Cubase, after we click the instrument list, the search box is highlighted by default, which is perfect. That means that our next action is to type in Omnisphere into the search box. I'll go ahead and remember the next two actions while I'm at it. So in our case, it's typing Omnisphere, hitting return on my keyboard, and hitting return again to add the track. So let's head back to Keyboard Maestro and add those three actions. In the action list, search for type and drag insert text by typing for the next action. In the text box, write Omnisphere. Next, let's add a keystroke. So, we'll search for keystroke and add type a keystroke next. It already displays return, which is perfect because that's exactly what we need. But if we needed to change it, simply highlight the keystroke name and hit the key or key combination on your keyboard. This is where I like to add another small pause. Remember, if you don't add those pauses, Keyboard Maestro will trigger the next action faster than your DAW might execute the commands. And those few milliseconds pauses are so small, you won't even notice they exist. So, we'll add a 0.1 second pause. Next is another return keystroke in order to verify and add Omnisphere as our instrument track. So, instead of searching for keystroke and dragging it in again, I'm just going to hold Option and drag the previous keystroke command to the right place. Okay, now we have a working command that will add a new instrument track, search for Omnisphere, and add it for you. If you want Keyboard Maestro to color your new track after it adds it, we need to do two things. One, we need to go into Cubase and open up Project Logical Editor and add a new command. You can copy these exact parameters I have here. I'm not going to go over the logical editor in this video because it's a whole other world, but in short, what is happening here is that if this container is a track and its property is that it's selected, then it will change the container or track to this color. If you click on the color name, it'll open up the color panel and you can choose which color you want. Just make sure to save it as a new preset and give it a name that you'll recognize. Essentially, we just added a new menu item that will change the selected track to the color you chose that will now appear in Keyboard Maestro. So, the second step is in Keyboard Maestro. Notice how after you hit add track, it takes a couple of seconds for Omnisphere to load. So we need to set another pause in Cubase, but since each computer is different and each time you load Omnisphere, it's going to take a little less or a little more time until it actually loads and every plugin takes a different amount of time to load, we need to find a constant condition that Keyboard Maestro can recognize and will trigger our next action as soon as the new track is added. So, we're going to search for pause and drag in pause until conditions are met. And you have a bunch of conditions to choose from, the list is very long. What I found is that until the plugins are loaded in Cubase, all of its menu items are disabled. So, we're going to pause until, all of the following are true, click new condition and add menu condition. Select name matching and we're going to type the exact name of the color preset we just created. It has to be exact. Finally, we want to pause until this menu item is enabled. So as long as Cubase is thinking and loading our plugin, all of its menu items, including the one we just created, are disabled. As soon as the track is added and Omnisphere is loaded, our menu item will be enabled. 
Keyboard Maestro will recognize it and will trigger the next action we will create right now. So, let's option drag the first action that selects a menu item to the last spot in our strings of actions, and we will find our new menu items we created. So, the logical editor presets are located in Menu, Cubase, Project, Apply Logical Editor Presets, and Find Your Preset. That's it! If you did everything right, you can go into Cubase, click your button on your iPad, and watch the magic happen. The thing is, once you created one macro, it is very easy to make others. Highlight your macro and duplicate it from the edit menu or just hit command D for duplicate. And all you have to change is the trigger, so check allow recording, click the next button on your iPad or keyboard and uncheck the box again. Change the plugin name Keyboard Maestro will search for and if you opted for the change track color, either add another color in Cubis Logical Editor and select the appropriate menu item in the last action, or if this instrument does not require any special colors, just remove the last two steps, which are the conditioned pause and the menu item selection. Yes, it's tedious and it takes time to figure out and it's a lot of trial and error, but how is it different from anything else in music production? In this case, by the end of the process, a new instrument track or an audio track with the right name, color and routing is just one click away instead of at least 18. Yes, I counted. And it's so much faster. Okay, so now let's go over some examples I personally use and you can implement into your own setup. And I will introduce some other actions that you might want to know when creating your own macros. So, the first one is relatively close to the one we did before, it's just a shortcut to create an audio track for recording my guitar. So, same as before, we're selecting a menu item to create a new track, waiting 0.1 seconds, and now I'm hitting the tab because Cubase automatically goes to the track name field when you're adding a new track. So, tab will exit out of that, and now we're triggering a mouse click for the input field, and typing in Kemper because this is the name of my guitar input. Next, we're hitting return to select it, waiting another 0.1 seconds, then one more mouse click to select track configuration for either mono or stereo. The next action will hit the S key for stereo and immediately hit return. Another small pause and now we're back on selecting the name field with a mouse click and we're typing in GTR, waiting a split second and hitting return again to create the track. Here we have another conditioned pause because since I have the Avid Artist Mix, it creates a small or sometimes big delay after creating a new track to update everything. So I have to make sure that the track has been created before I can color it. So in this case, I'm waiting until the front window of Cubase contains the title Cubase Pro Project, which is always the name of the main project window because up until that moment, I have the little Yukon updating window. This is probably not relevant to you, but this is a good example of something that I found to be inconsistent with my workflow and found a way to make it accurate for Keyboard Maestro every time. Finally, after the track is created and everything is okay, I trigger my color macro I created for my electric guitar. I know it seems like there's a lot of pauses and a lot of waiting in there, so just to prove a point, here is me triggering that macro. One key press, way faster than any human can do it. Okay, next we're going to go over a more complex macro. This one is my favorite one. It's for creating acoustic guitar tracks and it is super awesome. So, as you can see, this one is longer and it has more commands, so let's go over everything. So actually, it's kind of the same as before. We're creating a new track with the routing and track configuration and naming it, only this time we're not coloring it yet. Instead of coloring, we have a new command. So, Keyboard Maestro can actually both receive and send MIDI CC. And I have a dedicated general remote in Cubase, much like we did in the previous video, that receives a certain MIDI CC exclusively from Keyboard Maestro that pans the selected track. I'll put a picture of the settings for it now on the screen. So, 
Once we have our first audio track called ACGL created, we're sending out a MIDI CC with a value of zero in order to pan that track left. Next, I just duplicated everything and changed the name of the track to ACGR and sent the same MIDI CC, but this time with a value of 127 for right. The next step was to select both tracks in order to group them both. So, I'm triggering a shift plus up key press in order to select both the second track that is already selected and adding the first track, and triggering a new menu item to group the two tracks. Next is a couple of mouse clicks and key presses to configure that group track to stereo and name it ACG. Again, the same condition pause to make sure that the new group track is created and selected, and now we have a repeated action, this is what this guy is, which is the same as shift plus up arrow twice since our group track was selected and I wanted to select also the two individual mono tracks. And now that I have all three selected, I'm selecting the menu items to color them. And finally, I'm triggering one up arrow to select the track directly above the first ACG track, and another down arrow to select the first ACG track. These last two commands essentially result in the first ACG track being selected on its own and ready to record, so I'm saving myself one mouse click because every second counts. This is that macro being triggered. In this last macro, I'm introducing a small yet simple if this then that condition. I personally like to work in Cubase when Q-Link is always on. The problem is that every time you close and reopen Cubase, it resets the Q-Link to off, and the only way to turn it on is to have the mixer window selected. So, this macro is all contained inside this action, which is, if all conditions met, execute actions. And so, our condition is if any window title of Cubase 10 starts with Mix Console, which basically means that if our mixer is enabled, then Keyboard Maestro will execute these actions. First, it will bring the mixer window to front, or basically just select it, because the mixer can be enabled, but I can be working on the main project window. Next, it'll trigger my Q-Link menu item, and finally, it'll bring my project window to front, so I don't have to do it myself. Otherwise, or, if Cubase Mixer is not enabled, it'll first open it up, then, since opening it up already selects the Mixer window too, it'll execute the macro and finally select my project window again. This is a great simple little way to cover every possible situation for this action I want to perform, because if my Mixer window is enabled and selected, it will select it again, or essentially do nothing, and then execute the macro. If it's enabled but not selected, it will select it and then execute the rest of the macro. And finally, if my mixer window is not enabled at all, it will enable it and execute the macro. Okay, so on a final note, you've been asking how I got Alexa to trigger my Keyboard Maestro macros. Basically, I created a condition inside of an app called IFTTT, or if this then that. Sounds familiar? Right, so basically, I set this up so when I call my Echo device and say the right phrase, it'll place a text file inside of Dropbox called acg.txt. Then I have Keyboard Maestro using if this then that monitor this folder at all times for a file called acg.txt. So once the ifttt app creates one, then the conditions in Keyboard Maestro are met, and then Keyboard Maestro will trigger the command in Cubase and finally delete the file so it will no longer be triggered and ready for me to call for the command again. Kind of creative, kind of out of the box, I don't use this ever, I actually disabled this function in Keyboard Maestro, but you asked for it and this is how I did it. Okay, I think as an introduction for Keyboard Maestro, we covered a lot, and you have a lot of tools to play with and create awesome macros, so get creative and explore it. If you do need any help or if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll try to respond to each and every one of them. Or you can hit me with a DM on my Instagram at brian.rivlin and while you're there, I'll appreciate a follow. I try to share cool stuff and cool ideas as much as possible. 
There's also a huge community on the Keyboard Maestro's website's forum where I actually got some help on my more advanced macros. So definitely check it out. I'll have links in the description and please let me know what you think on this very long video and which videos you'd like to see in the future. Also, please like and subscribe because that's the currency of the 21st century. And of course, stay creative, stay awesome. I'll see you in the next one.